Good afternoon, class. Today we'll be covering an interesting topic, and that is of constellations and their origins. We will look at how it is that we see constellations and a different perspective as to how some of them came about. First, the constellation. Another word for constellations is asterisms, which are mere patterns of stars in the sky and are distinctive enough from one another so that they are easily identifiable. Interestingly enough, constellations are actually not two-dimensional. We only see them as such because the depth between stars is imperceptible since we are light years away from these stars. You can even see different constellations from different parts of the Earth. From the time at which humans first roamed Earth, and even up to the modern day, we have always been fascinated by the clusters of stars in the sky that so happen to line up perfectly and form the celestial objects that we know to be constellations. In ancient times, especially in ancient Greece, Many mythographies were attributed to certain stars and star patterns to explain how they got up in, into the sky. The International Astronomical Union recognizes 88 constellations. Over half of these constellations are attributed to being established by ancient Greek astronomers and the Greek religion. Today we will be looking at how Orion and Ursa Major came about and the involvement of the Greek goddess Artemis in their creation. Artemis the goddess of all trades. First, let's look at some of the background surrounding the Greek goddess. She's the daughter of Zeus and Leto and twin sister of Apollo. In Greek mythology, Artemis was sort of a goddess of all trades. And I say this because she was the goddess of wild animals, the hunt, vegetation, chastity, and childbirth. In most all depictions of her, she's accompanied by an object or creature and her bow and arrow. Virgin Artemis. One particular character trait that Artemis was notorious for was a strong emphasis of maintaining her own purity and virginity along with that of others. Artemis was also referred to as a protector of female youth. This is an interesting trait that the Greeks so heavily associated with the Greek goddess because many Greek mythographies seem to always have, a th have themes of sex, violence, and lying. It seems that it never fails that the gods or goddesses demonstrate some sort of trickery on one another to get what they desire. But Artemis is a unique case in that she shielded herself from impurity and upheld others to the same standard. In one story, Actaeon, a famous Greek hero, caught Artemis bathing and therefore saw her naked. As punishment, Artemis ended up killing him because she felt that her, impur that her purity was infringed upon. Orion In some stories that involved hunters, Artemis either favored them or would punish them because she did not approve of their malpractice. In one particular case, Artemis was rather fond of Orion the hunter, even to the point that she would strategically place animals for him to hunt. Because he was so talented, he turned out to be very boastful, and Gaia, the earth goddess, was offended by this. So she sent a giant scorpion, Scorpio, to kill Orion. Story has it that just before Orion was about to be killed, Artemis saved him by turning both him and Scorpio into stars in the sky. Artemis undoubtedly saved Orion's life. However, it does not seem completely out of the question that perhaps Orion is now condemned to an eternity of having to face off against Scorpio. Jealousy and envy were common feelings amongst Greek gods and goddesses, so perhaps Artemis was jealous of Orion's skill and punished him as such. Ursa Major This next story is an example of how Artemis retaliates against her followers if they are impure in their acts. Callisto was the daughter of King Lycan, and eventually became a devoted huntress alongside Artemis. And because of this, she too had to take a vow of chastity and remain a virgin. However, one day Callisto caught the eye of Zeus, who was notoriously not lustful and slept around quite often, despite being married to Hera. And Callisto ultimately became pregnant and gave birth to a baby boy, Arcus. Once Artemis found out, she banned Callisto from her band of huntresses, and Hera then transformed her into a she-bear as further punishment. Arcus grew into a sort of outdoorsman and became a skilled hunter. One day Callisto, now a she-bear, and Arcus, a hunter, encountered one another in the forest. Just before Arcus was unknowingly about to launch his spear at his mother, Zeus sent the two up into the sky and made them, made them parts of the stars. And now we have Ursa Ur Major, Callisto, and Ursa Minor, Arcus. It's just interesting how certain things come to be within the universe. It is always nice to see things from a different perspective since the modern day seems to be ruled by technology and science. Artemis can be considered a symbol of purity and innocence because of her vow to chastity. However, 
it is because of her devotedness that she can also be merciless in her punishments of those who do not follow her practice, which is where the irony lies.